Hello and welcome to Pocono. We are in the Arca series today. About ready to head out. It is new Pocono, not Legacy Pocono. And we have ourselves a midday race on Tuesday. Actually, it's more like evening, I guess. And uh, we are the number one car, unfortunately. A little disappointed because it seemed like we had a healthy number of signups, but I guess uh, I was gonna, I was destined to be number one in this race. And I don't know if I'm going to be able to pull that off. iRacing's expectation there. He won. Kind of iffy on my ability to drive well at Pocono. But we'll give it our, our best shot. It clear. This is actually my second okay. attempt. On Monday, I did a uh, race pretty uh, soon after the week switched over. I think it was like the second ARCA race of the week. And uh, I got wrecked on a straightaway. I was going to upload that one anyway, but it was early on. I was on this straightaway, in fact, uh, just driving right here. And uh, the guy in front of the guy that was on my right side drove into the wall on the straightaway for some reason. And then the guy behind him, which was the guy next to me, overreacted and like swerved to the left and then hooked me. And uh, I died on a straightaway. So that wasn't very fun. I, I, like I said, I was going to upload it anyway, but I figure, well, that's not very fun. I want to complete a race. Green flag, green flag. Okay. I know I'm going to race this again before the end of the week, so why not uh, give it another shot? At the very least, do a race that I'm going to complete, because my car was wrecked. I could have taken a fast repair or something, but I didn't really want to. In case you were wondering. Oh, that was terrible. I guess I should have all time optimal up. Pocono takes me a while to get the hang of. Every time we come here. And uh, even though I did practice and have done part of a race already, still not feeling exactly comfortable. So this is probably going to be a not so great lap. Session optimal. 55.6 is what we got. I know I can do better than that. I think I just got to stop over driving turn one. Bad habit of doing that. So you really got to get that good run off. You see I got a much better one this time. That's how long these straightaways are. It's just so crucial. Sometimes they use a little bit of apron there. It's not the best way to do it, but it's just because I'm trying to cut low as much as possible. Oh, but where am I? What am I doing? Way too low, too early in this corner. Yeah, I'm kind of stinking it up. I'm not hitting my marks very well, but uh, as, at least for right now, it looks like our first lap's holding up. Position. Which is surprising. I know it's a much faster guys that can hit better laps than that, but I guess I'll take it. We're going to be on pull for now. I really hope I don't get debumped up P2. My, yep, okay. <laughs> Good comedic, comedic timing, me. Bumped to P2 with a time that I was more expecting to be on pole. About 0.4. I've seen 0.3s as well. As I was saying, I was hoping I wouldn't end up P2. Maybe someone else will drop me to P3. But I always end up starting P2, I swear. But look, we got a handful of guys still going, so maybe that means we'll drop some more. Anything but P2, please. So I want to look to the left and get a terrible start and probably get run over before we get to turn one. Oh boy. So I don't even really think I'm going to be very good with saving tires here. Pocono is just really an awkward race to me. It feels like I'm driving in a big open field. There's just so much space out here. So much room in the corners on the straightaways. So much on throttle time. 
just feels like I'm in a big open field, and they're like, yeah, turn left uh, up here some ways, like, just kind of whenever you feel like it. <laughs> but that's definitely not the way to be fast. You have to be very precise. And I don't know, it's just, it's a weird feeling to me. I don't know if anyone even knows what I'm talking about, but... Looks like we might be starting P2, my favorite. The number two gets the pull time. Maybe I can watch him, since... Apparently he's got a better understanding of how to drive Pocono. Two tenths faster. And uh, he was driving well in practice too, I noticed. The in the open practice the before this. Might be someone who's already done a couple races. As for me, I've done, I think, like seven laps of race conditions. Before getting hit on a straightaway, so. Session last lap is ready. Try to take care of the tires. Hopefully it'll be a good one. Only a 2.1k strength of field. Like I said, I was kind of hoping uh, with a higher number of people signing up, we'd get a higher strength of field, but I don't know. I'm, if I want a chance at this win, I guess I'm going to need it to be lower because I'm not very good. Sideways start here at Pocono. I think they, like, started doing these sideways starts for a ton of tracks for a period of time as tracks were coming out, and then they stopped doing it. So there's, like, this time period where a tra where tracks were being released where, like, all these NASCAR locations that have you starting sideways like this. I think that's what I heard. I think it was, like, Nick saying or something. And now this is uh, just how we're going to be. Plenty of time for everybody ca to catch up, though, at this gigantic place. So no worries about everyone being able to get in line before we get to the start-finish, I wouldn't think. There's no tight changes allowed during Ready to go? Right. I saw a couple safety ratings that made me a little bit worried. So I might give a little extra room here to some guys. Of course, that's not the whole story. But might give me an idea of who to give a little extra room, and I think I'll do that anyway to everybody since I didn't survive the first race. I'd like to just survive this one. You are out of time. One left to green. Line up on the outside. Pit Road is closed right now. Catch the pace car. <laughs> I think Legacy Pocono in the ARCA car. Whenever we visited here last. I think you were like shifting to third. Unless I'm thinking of something else. I might be thinking of the 87s. Where you were shifting to third. But maybe this one too. I don't know. But I don't think it was new Pocono we were doing that. But I did experiment with that wasn't finding much success. You're kind of right on the limiter immediately shifting, but doesn't seem to be a thing here this time. It's not first gear start, is it? Nope. Don't blow your engine. <laughs> that was the equivalent of opening a box of mystery and seeing something scary and shutting it very quickly. Shift into first and it's threatening to blow my engine all of a sudden. So I'm going to be doing this number, looking to my left. I always feel paranoid when I'm looking to the left because I'm like, oh god, I'm going to run into something in front of me, even if there is nothing in front of me. So it's kind of an illogical fear, but... Ooh, I feel like I can't drive straight. If I ever can, I try to use the rear view mirror up there and look at the quarter panel on the back to see if he jumps, but that's not always possible. That's about as good as I can hope, I guess. Third place gonna come up on me. Keep 
All right, we, we had more speed going into turn one than I expected. Kind of overdrove that. I didn't think we were fully up to speed yet. I feel like that guy's going to get in trouble for that paint scheme. We're not going to talk about that. Try to get on the right rear. I think the plan is to not overdrive entries, get it slowed down enough, and then uh, once we're enough ways through the corner, using enough patience, just gonna gas it up, try to get on the right rear. Draft is almost non-existent in this car, so that's all pointless to me, the swerving to the left. You're just making your straight away longer. I don't really see a point in doing that. The car outside. I don't really want to be on this Stay guy's low. inside, but I won't wait behind him either. Stay low. <laughs> outside, clear. Leave the lane open for him up there. Stay low. There is a car on the high side. Still there. Hold your line. Still there. Hold your line. He's gonna hold on to me. Why is he swerving at me? The leader was just Still there. Hold your line. You're back in second. He's gonna let the leader just get away and win by holding on to us. Still there. Hold your line. A little bit too low, that's gonna give him a better runoff. He'll clear me again. Clear outside if you want to. Alright, it's fine, we'll file in. This guy behind gonna try to pass. Yep. Car inside. Still there, hold your line. Clear. Just gonna let that happen, not gonna worry about it too much. Really going to try to be risk averse here because I've had some terrible luck with Arc at Pocono in the past. I remember one season I was like eight or nine races in to the full season and I had zero X the whole time and I was like, man, could I do a whole season without getting a single incident? That would be awesome. And then Pocono happened. I got wrecked. So that fun little goal was ended and it was Pocono did it to me, so not uh, a great place for survival for me in the past. Because that wasn't even, I mean, that's not even talking about the previous attempt I did at this. Like, got wrecked that time, too. I'm kind of stinking it up, to be honest. Not really hitting my marks very well. I am getting on the brakes pretty solidly on entry. Maybe I'm saving tires a little bit better. Saving the right front, I mean. But who knows. Could be overdoing it as well. They're side by side up ahead. Whoa, they almost got the wall up there. Serious swerving around. <laughs> the guy behind me just got the wall on the straightaway. Apparently the straightaways are real tricky here. The tricky straightaways, what they should call it. You spend so much time on these uh, long highways, I guess it gives you more time to accidentally fall asleep and hit the wall, I guess. I'm kind of catching up to these two guys again that are in front of us. You'll notice, like, no draft at all, though. Really not a thing in these cars.
Coming up to the lap that I died last time, I'm pretty sure it was lap 7. Let's see if we can make it longer than I did on the previous attempt. Kind of underdrove, underdrove that, I think. Turn 3. Hanging in there at P4, though. Top 5 would be just fine with me. That's where we end up. Ooh, wow, that's a rotation there. I liked that. I was a little unprepared for it. I don't think I handled it very well, but I do like that I got so much rotation all of a sudden. It's the first time I felt that. A little bit of apron there, that's okay, as long as I'm ready for it. Try to get down here quite a ways, get some rotation. I don't know, it just feels like I'm not gaining anything. I guess the plus side is they're not really gaining behind me either too much. seams where you want to be. You can get on that seam, get some more rotation. I didn't really feel too much there, but I did get a good run off. Turned two pretty well that time. feels good. Definitely not feeling like I'm uh, hurting the tires too bad or anything. Hopefully it'll pay off. We're already uh, eight laps in though. Not feeling much different. Here's that rotation. I was a little more ready for it this time. Catch the 14 quite a bit there. I'm gonna get it like YouTube demonetized freaking for having this on my screen. Not that I make any money from this anyway, but he's gonna get mad at me for having that displayed on my screen too long, so let's pass it. How about that? Outside. Keep low. The captain Jones behind Outside. Us clear on zero. Alright, will he get a better run though and then end up on our inside again for turn one? That's the next question. It's fighting side by side for several laps is not what we need. It's real close to my rear end, but we're okay. I think he overdrove it. He might have even tapped the wall just a bit. Looks like he got pretty close at least. Kind of getting the rhythm of turn two again. One of those things that's very unique here that takes me a while to kind of get used to again every time we revisit, but I kind of feel a little bit more comfortable with it. Sudden. Catching up to the nine. I think the one's still holding steady out there in the lead, though. We are farther than I made it last time, so that's good news. Trying to stay a lane up this time, see if I can get a better run off. It didn't work, though. No run off to speak of. My bad, I don't push. Great run through turn two. Well, we're not aggressive enough on the throttle there. He'll get a run 
and hang on our outside. Not quite going to clear us though. Still there. Well, hang on though. Clear high. Keep the spot. Got space behind, thankfully. That'll help us work around the sky potentially. Not worried about draft, so you can go break it if he wants. I'm gonna just drive in a straight line. Okay, happy with how that corner went. Much better than last lap. After uh, fighting him. Fly in my face, that's not world's fastest fly keeping up with me here at Pocono. I'm not gonna try this again. You can block if you'd like. Gonna need to go though. Outside. Still there, hold your line. It's backing out or did I just Get more of a run than I thought. I thought for a second he was backing out. He's gonna get a better run. He's so hard to pass here, Pocono. Leader loves it. You know he does. I don't think we ever had a chance to catch him anyway, but he's feeling like the deal is sealed watching us fight from a kilometer away. We'll just have to wait for our chance. We'll have to uh, be smart about how we try to get around them. Maybe we even try to go on the outside. Is that a thing? No idea. Not interested in his draft again. Six laps to go. Looking pretty good for P3 at least, so long as we don't wreck the thing. Get the brake a little harder than I wanted to there. I want to go to his inside. It hasn't been working, so I'm just going to hang behind him here for a second. Not a great turn one. All of a sudden we're catching the leader, though. He's 2.2 ahead. That's three-tenths closer than when I last looked. I wonder if he's falling off hard, maybe. Hit the brake too hard again. <laughs> a little heavy on the brakes here, Pocono. You really don't need too, too much brake. Especially since these cars aren't going all that fast to begin with. Man, we're catching that leader. Maybe I don't fight this guy just because it gives us a chance to catch up to him. It's 
Still 2.0 after the turn one. I messed up the turn in there. That was not good. It's too close to the back of the nine. Three laps to go. Leader's getting closer. Or bigger in the mirror. At least it looks that way. Guys have seen better days. In terms of turn in. But not unreasonable either. Tons of room behind, don't have to worry about that at all. Finally hit turn two right for the first time in about five laps. I don't want to fight him. I want a chance to catch the leader. I mean, we're not going to, but we're one mistake away from it. And I just I don't think I'm going to pass him anyway, even if I do get on his inside. However, if I get on his inside here, maybe we can pass him through the turn two. There we go. All right. That's a pass. We're not going to have time to catch the leader, but... Yeah, well done. It's always kind of scary being side-by-side -side through turn two. Yeah, you set me up good for that one. I was paying attention. <laughs> I just noticed that we was catching the lead a little bit. <laughs> yeah, I did catch my eye. Catch a leader. Well done to him, because it's not easy, like I said, being side by side. Turn two. Man, a couple more laps, you never know, but you're racing. Good win, David. Yeah, nice racing with you, Colton. Thanks, guys. Good run. We're on the podium. Good yeah, great race. Flag. Sweet, that, was re that went really well. All right, me too. We're supposed to win it, according to iRacing, but like I said, that was going to be a tough task at Pocono. Not my best facility, but we get a P2. Had a very uh, fun race with the nine. Very tough to make a pass here, but we were able to get the nose on him turn two and uh, able to get enough of a runoff to uh, get clear. So that was that was pretty fun. All right, what were the tires? 7382, so probably not great on the right front. I probably could have done better, but a lot of that was me trying to pass and failing. And that's always going to put a little more strain on that right front when you have to take a... Uh, a more shallow entry or or so but yeah that was that was pretty good that was pretty darn good i didn't wreck didn't get wrecked on a straightaway didn't wreck myself and uh we'll call that a solid run let's see what contact did happen imagine we're going to get a couple of wall hits out of the corners and such Ooh, the 15 and the whoever was on his inside there. A little slower through the corner and the 10 catches up to him. Quicker than he probably expected. 
Just the smallest of taps. And then the 12 runs right into it. He didn't have much time to react though. So Tony Stewart gets spun and then 12 finds it because it's right in his path. These cars, you just cannot touch the bumper at all. You touch them and watch, it'll spin right around. I'm surprised that didn't spin them right around. Got pretty close. Close enough it registered as contact, I guess. That's about probably as hard as you can hit it without it spinning. There's one of those hard hits I was talking about. Especially at a turn two, you're going to get a lot of those. It's a very tough balance of carrying a lot of speed through there and not finding the wall at high speed. There's some wall right there in three that time. Wow, and that's the end of the race. All right, the eight's just goofing after it's over. That was a pretty darn clean race other than the one wreck we saw. And uh, I guess since that was so quick, we'll go ahead and go back and watch that pass from a different perspective. It was a good turn one that got us to his inside, and that's what we really needed. That's going to be the one passing zone, I think the one good place to get it done if you're going to try on the inside at least. I, I, had, didn't, I didn't try the outside. I wouldn't think that would work, but we get enough of a run there that we can hang on his inside. Just have the nose, so he has to uh, give us a lane. We got pretty close there. He's a little off the wall, but able to stick it. See, what I did here is because I knew I was going to be on the inside and I knew it was going to be crucial to get a good run off in order to pass him, you'll see I actually brake much harder than you normally would into turn two. So that way I could then gas it up real quick, get the right rear out there, and uh, by slowing down on entry enough, I can make sure that I'm carrying all momentum through the exit and not have to like feather the throttle or anything. Gives me enough of a run off to get past him and uh, taking that outside line in turn two. That's always going to be tough, very tough ask. So if because if you if you overdrive it, a lane up in turn two, you've got a one way ticket to the wall. So. The 9 uh, did himself a favor, I think, not overdriving that, trying to fight too hard for the spot. Because you'll see so many times guys are like, oh, i, I got to hold on to this spot, i got to drive through turn too hard on this outside. And it's, I mean, I've done it to myself before. You end up hitting that outside wall, and then you lose the spot anyway. So, alright. Pretty good race. That was uh, pretty darn clean. 8 got himself a P4. And we'll slide through turn one in celebration, I guess. And uh, the two backs up his very fast qualifying run. And I will get myself a P2. I'll definitely take it. All right. Thanks for watching. This has been Pocono in the Arca car. And uh, I hope you enjoyed. And I will see you next time with something different. Have a good one.